time gold medal winner on her quest for her third Olympics. We cannot wait to catch up with her throughout this half hour. We also have a special reveal of the outfits, as you can see, designed once again by Ralph Lauren. They are fantastic, and Team USA is going to be wearing those during the closing ceremonies. In fact, the coats we're, we are wearing right now are a big part of that you outfit. You should turn around and... USA's brightest mm -hmm. stars, you know, are skiing superstar Michaela Schiffrin. We're talking about how she is preparing and what are her goals for 2022. But first, this oh. is today. Come on, and gun see. show. Oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back as we mark 100 days until the Winter Olympics. And of course, no celebration would be complete without one of Team USA's biggest names. We're talking about Michaela Schifrin. She is a superstar, <laughs> two-time Olympic gold medal winner. She has big plans for the games, big goals, and she's already off to an incredible start. She won the giant <laughs> slalom, yes. won it in the season opening World Cup event just last weekend. Michaela, you're off and running. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> so, I mean, there's a long time in yeah. skiing terms between now and the the Olympics, mm -hmm. but you do have big goals. What are they? Oh, yeah, big, <laughs> big old goals. Those goals, they'll, they'll get you every time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I am right now. I'm a little bit focused on the World Cup season, but I mean, your eyes always set a little bit on the Olympics. Mm -hmm. And uh, after coming back from Solden and winning the first race, I feel like it was. It's like the first check mark on my journey to hopefully be able to compete in every event at the games. That's hopefully wait, compete every, in every, every event, event, every alpine games. skiing event. No, well, that's that's, that's a Michaela, big deal. only you could even consider that yeah. as a potential right. because you excel in, in mm -hmm. both kinds of ski racing. Thank yeah. You. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, yeah. So there's there's six six alpine events total. And I wanted to do that in South Korea. Uh, mm -hmm. I actually wanted to ski in five events in South Korea, and it a, a lot of things happened that just made it not mm -hmm. possible. Um, and it looks like, you know, it, it might be some difficult weather in, in Beijing. We'll mm -hmm. see. Yeah. But I think with anything I learned from South Korea is that you just have to roll with the punches. And well, there are a lot of there are a lot of cool that. things about you. One of them is you say that you are not defined by your success. I mean, I feel like you're a really grounded human being. Like oh. if you don't have a great day. <laughs> So what? Like, you seem like you are secure in what you do. So when you're getting ready to go down and do one of your runs, like, what's what's kicking through your head at that moment? Oh, uh, I... I'm just trying to focus on my skiing as, yeah. as much as possible because there there are some athletes who are so driven just to win that just their their motivation to win alone is what actually gets them to the finish line faster. But for me, it's always been about good skiing and like the turns that I make along the way. So I don't know, it's a little bit like that metaphorical. It's it's the journey, not the end destination. Mm -hmm, yeah. But it's true for me. That's how I've always had my best races. Just skiing well. Mm -hmm. and, and just in case people, you know, last they were checked in with you, you were winning gold four years <laughs> ago, at, excuse me, five years ago at the Olympics, and now here you are winning again <laughs> in your most recent mm -hmm. race. In between, you've had incredible challenges. Mm -hmm. You lost your father. Mm -hmm. You've dealt with anxiety mm -hmm. and, and the stress of, uh, of that, mm -hmm. and then a pandemic to boot. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling, and how mm -hmm. has that journey been for you? Um... Well, I guess it's just, it's been life. And yeah. I think everybody's dealing with something. I, you know, we're all dealing with the pandemic. So that's one thing we all have in common. Um, for me personally, my family dealing with uh, unexpected death of my dad was the most difficult thing I've ever survived. Um, mm -hmm. And that's, I mean, it's okay. Like, it's okay to talk about it. Um, I think it's been over the last couple of years. It's been important to talk about, and a lot of people actually seem to be able to relate to that on some level. Because aside from the pandemic, everybody's dealing with something on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, and there's a lot of like loss and grief and sadness out there. But there's also a lot of strength and hope. And I think it's important for us to all be able to connect on the more positive side of it. And you like really that. personify yeah. that. You do. After, after your dad passed, did you think about whether or not you would ski again? Was that something that you thought about? Yeah, I did. I, I wondered if it was really worth it. Um, I mean, there's a really long time that I didn't really feel like it was worth it to care about anything. So it mm. seemed like I'm not going to go ski race again because 
the, ba the most fundamental thing of an athlete is that you have to care about your sport and mm -hmm. you have to care about doing well at your mm -hmm. sport. And I just didn't. I just thought mm -hmm. I don't care about actually really anything in life. Mm -hmm. um, so it was, it, it's been a, a long process to get that motivation and that actually the feeling of caring back. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know, I, <laughs> a lot more good days than bad yeah. now, but... It's still difficult. It's not sure. easy to talk about, but I'm yeah. so glad you did because yes. I want people to know what a triumph it is. <laughs> yeah. What you just did last weekend, yeah. and what you're setting out to do. Thanks. It's a triumph yeah. in every single way, yeah. just you being here. You guys are gonna make me cry. No, but I just, um, you yes. know, so Thanks. you're also a huge, I just want to say before you go, I love that you're a huge fan of the Olympics and I heard that, actually I heard you, we were in Tokyo, we yeah. heard you screaming for the athletes all the way yes. back in the US. Yes. You're a huge me. fan. Do you mm -hmm. watch, I heard you taped the Olympics and then would watch them yeah. later. Yeah, we were taping everything and then we had it going <laughs> streaming on Peacock and like always in the background and um, the the gym I work out back home at the Westin is, um, they always had it on in multiple TV screens. So yeah. I'm doing my squats and I'm looking up and I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, this is so I'm like, one more rep. Well, oh you can God. guarantee that they're gonna be watching you doing yes. the exact same thing. Well, Michaela, we are cheering we you are. on. Congratulations, you. so happy you're here with us. Go get them. Coming up next, a Today exclusive with two more Olympic hopefuls proudly showing off some very special red, white, and blue. But first, this is Today on NBC.